Howdy folks, welcome back to Railroader. It is, was it day eight? Yeah, it's day eight, about 10 in the morning. And we have a new locomotive. Of course, this isn't it, this is old number three. Old Reliable. We're over here in Bryson, and I've got a bunch of work to do, and I've expanded. So I've opened up the map here. Got the uh, bridge repaired here, so now we can, oops. Now we can get over to uh, Hemingway and Alarca Junction. And then there's nothing else down here other than the passing siding at Brooks. Then that's the next bridge we need to build. And in progress, I have the uh, Larka Junction Y in progress. So that'll open up this uh, Cochrane and Alarka itself. Uh, there's a coal mine here. We've got uh, a contract with that. I'm taking a boxcar down there now. It looks like it's full of mining parts or mining supplies. And they have to have those to mine to produce coal. So I would imagine once we deliver that, They'll start having coal that we need to pick up and maybe bring empties up, I think. We'll see how that works. But uh, anywho, y'all probably want to see the engine, and some of you guessed correctly on my community post. Let's pop down. It is sitting down here at a Larka Junction, getting ready to load up some passengers. And without further ado, it is the Atlantic, build A26. I went with this because it has a huge tender. <laughs> I won't have to refill it as much. We don't really need the speed. I mean, the, the starter loco, the 10-wheeler, can easily handle the speeds we have. Uh, but it had really short legs with a smaller tender. But this has a huge tender, like t 13 tons of coal, I think, when it's full. And then like 7,000 gallons of water, something crazy like that. And uh, yeah, there she is. She's a beauty. Got some nice big old drivers. Nice uh, 442 configuration there. Don't know if that's what the A means. Uh, I think it's 26,000 pounds of tractive effort. If we go look here. Yeah, if you round up. So there you go. That is the new loco, and she is doing fine. We've got three passenger coaches now. They are, uh, looks like about half full. So I'm going to wait a little later. Uh, this is the end of the line. So I'm going to wait till later in the day and then we'll run back to Whittier. And we'll get that going. Although, now that I say that, I do have to get around that to go up to this coal mine. So I think I'll get the switching done at Bryson and then I'll have to, I'll send this guy back to Bryson before we come down here. Cause yeah, I can't get to that because the Y is not complete. We've got some cars to drop off here, but there's nowhere to get around it. Uh, I take that back. There is a track in Hemingway, so we can bring it back up to Hemingway and get around it. Anywho, we need to get to work. Woo! So, I believe I'm in this. Am I in this loco? Now I'm in that loco. If we pull up the waybills... You can see the back part of the train is going down to the Alerica Junction site. And we've got uh, Bryson Lumber and Coal. We've got a couple for the Appalachian Hardwoods. And we got some pickups on the way out of town. So this one needs backed into that one. So we just need to cut off and get this guy delivered. Make sure I don't have any orders on there. No, we're good. We're doing on uh, we're doing good on coal and water. All right, so we need to throw you, and we need to throw you, and we need to uh, come in here. So we need to throw you, you, and you, and we need to not run into the. Pit. Not sure if I have enough room. We might fit. If not, I will have to rotate the table around. No biggie. Sometimes you just gotta blow the whistle. <laughs> 
We'll get her up to about 15 or so. There we go. Should have all the switches aligned. What's cool about the new Loco is it actually have, it has a backup light. It's got a, a light on the back end, which is cool. And I'm just leaving the cylinder cocks open. Oh yeah, we can fit in there. No problem. No problem. All right, then we're going to throw you, and then we need to throw you. And let's double check. Does this guy... Yeah, that one is empty, so it needs pulled out. So we'll have to do uh we'll have to do the old swap a rooney here. So we'll just ease back in here. Snag that one, we'll stick it there temporarily. Shove the good one back in there. So we're dropping off uh lumber. Makes sense. It's Bryson Lumber Coal and Supply Company. So we're dropping off the lumber. And that'll do. Woo! All right, we'll do that, and then we'll take the old handbrake off. How's this coal car doing over here? Seven and a half tons left in there. It's just about ready to get emptied out. Uh, I don't know what we'll fit with. Well, we don't have to drag two cars out, though, do we? So never mind. We're good. Just need to get past this switch. This one is going back east with us. Chuff, chuff, chuff. <laughs> and that'll do. I get a lot of comments like every video that, hey, if you shift click, we'll do the, uh, the ankle cocks. And, uh, yeah, that's true. I do that a lot. But sometimes I don't want to bottle the air, so I'll do it by hand. It will bottle the air by default. And then that should... Yeah. So I don't even really technically need the handbrake. That's just a backup for the cylinder. Because the cylinder could fail and leak. I don't know if that's modeled. I kind of doubt it is. Uh, but it will. I think it will eventually leak out over time. So if we were going to leave it there for a long time, you would for sure want to set the handbrake. I know you can't see in the video that I'm holding shift. But if you see me manually doing the angle cocks is because I don't want to bottle the air. Alright, let's just check. Yep, we do have the right car going back in there. And I could kick this back in there. It's a level track, but we'll just take her on back. It's a little bit of a short track, so we got to get it all the way back here by the buffer. That ought to do. 
that and do that. I'm trying to do my whistling. Hopefully I haven't messed it up. You can let me know if I messed it up. All right, back out we go. We need to grab this guy on the way out. And just lots of switching. I switch, uh, switched. <laughs> I skipped over some of that just to get some progress done. But there was enough stuff going on here at Bryson. Uh, I thought I would make a video out of it. And we can see the new uh, Atlantic passenger train do its thing here in a little bit. I already dropped off cars at uh, Whittier and Ella on the way over here. We had, I think it was 24, 25 cars, something like that. It wasn't all that heavy. It was like 1,200 tons. But there was there were quite a few cars. Oops. There's a weird, like, mouse thing. And I finally figured out that if you're over some of these UI elements, like I'm holding right mouse button now, which would normally pan, and I move, and then as soon as I get to where it takes effect, it's like it stores up the delta on the mouse. I need to report that as a bug. So that can throw you, like if you're moving your mouse a lot here, and then doink, all of a sudden it moves it. Because it's, it's tracking your mouse delta, like in the code, and then it, it applies it. It doesn't apply it until you leave, but it... So it, it should take the mouse delta from where it enters the usable area versus here, but that's just just a little more code that needs to go in there. No biggie. Everybody's eyes glaze over as I talk about code. <laughs> uh, I'm not a game developer, but I've I've been a system administrator slash DevOps guy for the last 25 years, so I've done a lot of programming and system stuff, and even worked in the video game industry for about five years. Supporting developers on the infrastructure side. And it was a large, well-known game studio, but I haven't really ever mentioned that because I just kind of keep that separate from my Kerbo online personality. <laughs> it would just lead to awkward questions that I don't really want to answer, at least not right now. But anywho, moving right along, Let's get back over. And I think we'll pick a track where we'll put our outbounds. I'm debating on picking up that flat car on the uh, house track before we get the passenger train back over here. Might be a thing to do. But we'll clean up our switches as we come through here. Like that, and like that. Then I think we'll stick our outbounds over here on this track. Keep those separate. That guy you picked up yet? Nope, he's still sitting over there. But this guy, yeah, that guy over there, that flat car on the house track is ready to be picked up. All right, you know the drill. We're going to set the handbrake. And we'll dump the air as we pull away. Okay, this needs to get shoved down. That needs to get picked up. Yeah, let me go ahead and snag that car. And then we'll have all of the work done like in this part. And I won't have to uh, occupy the main. So we'll be out of the way of the passenger working its trip. Alright, 
go ahead and clean that up and then we can come back down that main track and I'll just stick it on the end of that other boxcar that's outbound All right, away we go. This is going to take a little bit of running, so I think I'll put a cut in here. I'll go snag that car and get it on there, and then we'll be ready to push this on down, and we'll get our moves planned out. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, coming back up, and we're going to hook on to here. thought I'd just show some of the AI stuff I do. That seems to work pretty well. So I'm in road mode here, and you can see he's slowing down because he sees the car up there. So I'm going to switch to yard and hit 10 cars. You see it's again picked up this uh, caboose, number 900. So in yard mode now, he'll just go ahead and creep up there and couple and then stop. So I'll typically use road mode, you know, to, to zip around and do whatever I need to do. And then when it gets close, Start slowing down, I'll switch it to yard mode for the couple. Yeah, okay, and then we'll switch back to manual. Stop for a switch lined against us, yep. Don't want you to go. So I got that flat car, got that over there, got the switches all lined back up. I think, did I do this one? No, I need to do that one right there. And let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Those are all lined up. Uh, let's go ahead and get the passenger train headed out. We'll take a look at the new engine. So we'll get the passenger train up here on, on the siding at Hemingway. And I think I'm actually going to look at this from the, the side of the road here, as it were. Get a few more in there. It's still not full, but that's okay. Go back here. I've saved this with these orders. I'm going to go ahead and redo them. It's just every once in a while you get some weirdness. And I was looking back through the comments on my community post, and uh, it looks like Chamel Romeo 1662 said, I bet it's an A26 Atlantic. And you were right. <laughs> Nice big old beast. It's going to head on down the line to Hemingway. Very cool. And I'm going to just double check. I believe I set up flares and we're good to go here. Let's just take a, a quick look. All right, I was in first person view. Yeah, we got the fuse all set up. We got 34 passengers waiting here, heading to Whittier and Bryson. Uh, so they'll pull in, and then, so if I do that, and then that, we're back over here in this train. So I can start heading on down the line. But we've got a couple here we need to drop off at the uh, App Appalachian Hardwoods. And the rest goes on down the line. All right. Good deal. Oh, I didn't hook the air up. I need to do that real quick. Get lined out of here. Using the uh, caboose here as a shoving platform. Now we have air. A uh, new update you can do is Q and E to rotate, so that's kind of handy. They fix some other bugs and whatnot. So 15 cars, 865 tons, a little bit of weight. And we should be good all the way out through here till the main line. So we just need to switch this guy. And we need to switch this guy. 
How are we doing here at Standard Oil? This one is a fourth of the way unloaded, or three fourths of the way unloaded. Come on down here. I assume one of these needs picked up. I'm going to clean up my switch list. I don't have anything on here that needs picked up. Oh, I haven't updated it. All right. I should update it at the Bryson uh, warehouse. So we'll go ahead and just throw these on the switch list. They need picked up. Now if I pull that up. So this is going to G3. And this one's going to R1. So we've got basically just replacing these guys that are already here. And they still have plenty of coal. I had, I had a couple of three comments about the coal. It's probably to run a steam generator to power the stuff here at the at the factory. And that, that makes sense. So thanks for that. I was thinking of like drying, but wasn't thinking about the period here that would probably be steam power. All right, we need to start driving our train because we're wasting all kinds of steam. Yep, need to push a little harder. Push. How much coal have I got left here? So I got 31 tons of coal. Awesome. Slowly getting up to speed here. Slowly but surely. I'm trying to see if I can tell any difference in acceleration. Oh yeah, about 40%. That'll probably work. And how's the old passion train doing? It is up pulling into Hemingway right now. So we can sneak around it there. Once we get the uh, Appalachian hardwood switched. So I don't want this video to go on too long. I'm going to go ahead and switch out the Appalachian Hardwoods. It's literally just swapping these two cars for the two cars that are there. Uh, and then we'll we'll pick back up when we're passing the uh, passenger train down to Hemingway. So see you in a bit. Well, I was going to wait till this was done, but this turned out to be fairly interesting. There's a bit of a grade here. So in hindsight, I should have left the heavier portion of the train off and come to Came down and did the switching. Uh, so I've got the passenger train headed on past us while we work the Appalachian hardwoods here. And it's, it's a little bit of a slog pulling this back uphill. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I've got the, uh, I've got the old cars pulled out, getting ready to stick the new ones back in there. Uh, so this one goes there. See, it just, it'll roll right down this grade. So let's go ahead and get these guys laced up. Oh, this camera. I really hope they change the camera. Be a little more conventional third uh, loading camera. With the scroll and the rotating around the point, it just, it's, it's hard. It takes a little getting used to. All right, so we are going backwards. You can see here it's it's a hard pull <laughs> as we start easing back up the hill. Brake, brake pipe coming back up. And as we're struggling up the hill the passenger train is going to go flying by us so we'll we'll get that visual where's he at he's getting ready to come around the corner all right this might be a thumbnail
It's a shot anyway. All right, where are we at? We are just coming past the switch. Excellent. We'll throw that. And then I don't know if there's enough grade for these guys to roll on their own. Maybe? Let's give her a little push and we'll see here. Although they need to roll to separate tracks, so this probably won't work. <laughs> I can't just I can't put this handbrake on just a little bit. Oh, so they have separated. See what I mean with the camera? Like just let me just let me turn and look at stuff. I really hope they can change that or have an optional mode. It makes it really difficult to get like I don't want I just want to turn this way. I don't want to rotate on that point three miles out in the distance. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. We're going to we're gonna have to give it some help. So we'll let the train start rolling down here. I think the grade is like right here, not necessarily here. All right, number one has stopped at the Bryson Passenger Depot. Excellent. Let them get loaded up. And we get just a little bit of brake on so we're not slamming into this too hard. Whoa, come on. All right, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. Here we go, 65 for 65, because that wasn't a very long trip for those folks. Just let the weight of the train push this on down. Now this one we can probably cut loose now. Start slogging it back out of here. Good. We did put the right car in here. And that ought to do. Here we go. Got paid. And speaking of uh, the timely bonus, I didn't show it very good in the last video. But if you hover over this, you get a tooltip that tells what I was trying to explain. It's not from 6 to 3, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., 2%. It's for the days, same first or second day. First, second, or third day, timely delivery. There you go. And I didn't leave my mouth still long enough, so. There you go. There's that. And I was talking instead of driving my train. So we just need to get a little bit of speed up here. And we can kick this guy loose. That'll probably do. Oops, there's that mouse thing I was talking about. All right, you can start slogging your way up out of there. Meanwhile, we have to coast all the way down there. Hopefully that's doable. If not, I'm gonna be embarrassed.
And I may have to grab some water. Our tender is getting fairly low. There's no water down at Alarica, so. We might be heading back over to Bryson to get some water. Got, uh, we've got a thousand gallons, but I don't know if that'll be enough. I don't want to run out. Probably would be enough, but we're fairly close to the water tower in Bryson, so I think I'll just fill up before we head down there. What are you thinking, car? You think you want to make it all the way down there? Go blow on it? <laughs> we can always push it into place if we need to. If you didn't know, you can go to first person view and then do shift R against like the, the car. And it'll pull it. Basically, you're sticking a pry bar between the tie and the axle and pushing, and you can slowly move the car. So that can be handy. I think we're going to be okay. We just have to get it lined up at the dock here. The level portion of the dock. And we're all good. In line with the awning, I think. Yep. All right, we're good. Throw on the handbrake. And we get paid for that one as well. All right, engine, let's get on out of here. Let's go get some coal. So now we have the two that we need to drop off. And then we have the Robinson Gap coal which is, excuse me, 52 and a half tons of mining supplies. Come on, train. Maximum effort, let's go. So if we come down here to Robinson Gap Coal, you can see production stopped, mining supplies. So it needs mining supplies to produce coal. Looks like that's how that works. So that's kind of neat. So I'm going to slowly inch my way out of here. And we'll pick back up when we're dropping this stuff off at Alarca. Well, as you might have guessed from that last little run by there, um, I ran out of power. <laughs> this, this hill is pretty steep. And what I didn't realize is all these empty cars, they're not empty. Yeah, there's 40 tons of ties. I thought these were empty because they're visually empty, uh, but they're not. I should have paid attention. We still had almost 800 tons just on what we were bringing over here. So that was my bad. I wasn't really paying attention to total tonnage. I just thought, oh, this is a string of empty cars. Now we'll, we'll have no, no troubles there. Well, we did have troubles. I can't pull the hill. So I'm going to have to get some help. So I'm going to have to bring the other loco over here, unfortunately. And uh, get us pushed up the hill. So that'll take a little doing. Got a little ways to go, and I don't know what the gradient is here. I wish we had a gradient map for the route. That would be super duper duper handy. I don't know if anybody's made one yet, or if the devs have supplied one. Uh, that's you know that's essential for a railroad is to have a gradient map. Anywho, we we aren't ma made it. To, we haven't blah 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 blah. English is hard. <laughs> try that again. So the passenger trains made it all the way back over to Whittier. That's the good news. 
Uh, the bad news is it's on the opposite end of the railroad and I need a little boost over here. So I'm going to have to take some time and I'll get the passengers ran back over and I'll give ourselves a little nudge with the new engine. So I'll see you in a little while. Help has arrived, finally. <laughs> I know this isn't prototypical having the passenger coaches on there and whatnot. Probably should have the caboose on the back. But that's okay. We're just playing a game. We're going to rescue this train. So let me switch this over to yard mode. Have him pull out and up and couple. Number one, helping number three. This thing is having some interesting physics, so I'm going to go ahead and put the brakes on on that. Then this should stop. It's in yard mode, so it should couple up and then stop. And it did. All right, we're going to put that back on manual mode. Now that these are coupled together in a train, uh, I'm going to want to put this guy in MU mode. So I'm going to bring that window back up. And we're going to cut out the brakes so that my number three locomotive will control all the brakes on the train. Then we're going to set MU. So it will drive with us. And then in theory, we can walk on up this hill. It's a good theory. Now let's get the hoses laced up here. Oh, his brakes. Oh, I see. I see. All right. All right. So I need to physically go in here. Why is his brakes on? They show an orange back there. Yeah, they're not releasing for some reason. Because they were on when I cut him in, maybe? Not sure. Let me select one. Back to this. Yeah, his brakes are all off. I cut out. Immu. Back to this guy controlling. There we go. For some reason, his brakes were on, I guess, when I MU'd, so just had to make sure they were all off. And away we go. Victory. Victory was had. <laughs> so we'll have the new Atlantic pushing us up the hill. And then we'll see how the grade is. I think I can leave the passenger train here at Hemingway on the siding and then get back around him. As we expand, I need to uh, I need to check the gradient map a little more carefully, and also pay more attention to my tonnage because these empty cars are definitely not empty. All right. Well, I'm going to make my way over to uh, Hemingway, and I think I can cut off the passenger train there. And then we'll pick back up here at Larka, and we'll try to get this video finished. I have no idea how long this thing's going to be by the time I get it edited together. The whole 20, 30 minute video thing kind of went out the window with Railroader because there's just so much to do. There's just so much to do. Anyway, hope it's not too long. See you in a bit.
All right, the train's rolling in, and I had to have help over here, too. I couldn't make it from... Is that Hemingway? Yeah, Hemingway to Alarca. I couldn't make it. I had to get the passenger train over here to help out as well. So it's really steep. Really steep over here. <laughs> all right, let's get all this back to manual. So I'm going to have to break the train apart. So I'm setting this car here because this goes over to the... Uh, the coal mine and the rest goes on to the the spur here so we're running around in first person here for change and let's see let's go get the uh, passenger train cut off get it back over to Hemingway so we can get around it or actually while I'm up on the coal branch I can service the station and then get it going so We'll just cut her loose. So I need to bring this up and we're going to take it off of that. We're going to go ahead and set its independent brake. And then we're going to uncouple that. Now I do need to back it up some. So let's go back over to control. And we'll back it on up a ways. We got room to work. A giant leaf there, isn't it? <laughs> I need enough room I can back up and clear the switch. So I think that'll work. Let the ADs do a stop back there. And we're going to do our thing here. I just need to get up past this switch and then these all set over here on this junction. This is just one phase, so tomorrow we should have the Y done, which is cool. Probably should be looking. I think I have enough room back there. Oh, yeah. All kinds of room. We only need to go back about four more car links. So what this tells me is I'm going to need a more powerful engine. So my thought my thought has been to keep the mogul for the logging. Text overflow. And then uh, get a more powerful loco for the general freight running. We're definitely going to need it. Can't tell if we got a little bit of a rise here and then it levels off, or if that's a downward trend. One or the other. We'll see how well we coast. All right, let me go ahead and step off here. Running around like this always reminds me of Run 8. I do a lot of switching and local work in Run 8. And this, this game has a lot of similarities with Run 8, which is a good thing in my opinion. It's not as, quite as deep of a simulation, but then it's got a lot more of the nice stuff that's driving the economy and waybills. And you have to use your imagination a lot with Run 8 and kind of Make up your own stuff to do. Whereas this has some gameplay built in, which is nice. All right, before we run off the track, let's get stopped. There we 
go. And that should be delivered, I believe. Yep, that's setting on the track, so. That ought to do. Alright, that's cleared the switch. Let's go back to Loco. Need to, whoa, come on mouse, work with me. <laughs> I need to get a bug report put in for that. Kind of annoying. Not the end of the world, it is kind of annoying. No, it's good because it's taking a box off here, so that's cool. So that is working as intended. Now we just need to figure out where this guy goes. And I believe there's a run around tracks up in there. There's quite a few tracks up in the coal mine area. So we should be good to go. Toss that on there. And we'll head on down. We're gonna come around the bend. Then we just have a car, so. Oh, well, this says 15, Robinson Gap. What's this say? Yard limit. Okay. You're not supposed to come past there when you're switching. Duly noted. Where you at, train? Coming around the bend? <laughs> If we take a quick look up in here, there's a, there's a yard up here and I don't know for sure where this is going. We'll have to figure out when we get up in here. Oh, let's slow down. I did throw that switch, so we're good there. Got a little carried away with the speed there. So this looks fairly see. We might need a real beefy engine over here. That uh, kind of has me a little bit concerned. Depending on you know how many coal cars. I see we're bringing empties over here. So I'm definitely going to have to look into replacing, or not replacing this, but getting another engine. And this could become logging duty, at least temporarily. Hang in there, number three. Yeah, this is a slog. Oh my goodness. We are going to need one heck of a beefy engine. I'm just pushing one boxcar up in here. Granted, it's 52 and a half tons. It's a little ways back in here to the mine. I'm hoping this video doesn't end up like an hour and a half long. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you're still watching at this point, you're enjoying it. So, appreciate you hanging out. There's just so much to do, and then I get in over my head. Yeah, it looks like we're leveling out a bit. So, where exactly are you going? Only three miles that way, all right? up yonder S1 it says oh there it is it's up there on the side okay I thought it might be this little pocket right here and it is
double check, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I topped off with water. <laughs> We're uh, down to about half again. Right up at the end of the track. And then apparently they're going to start pumping out coal. So I'm guessing tomorrow we'll have empties to bring up here. It makes sense. Yeah, we're going to do that and then pull that. And there you have it. We are done. I'm going to close out this video because it's gone on way too long. And if you heard the little ding in the background, I've, I've got a late work meeting coming up. So thanks as always for hanging out, folks. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.